Okay, so we're on our applications of calculus topic, and we're going to have a look at volumes of solids of a revolution. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take a two-dimensional shape on a, a two-dimensional axis, x, y axis, and we're going to think about rotating it about the x-axis to form a three-dimensional solid. Um, I want a couple of illustrations of what that might look like. Uh, you could take any two shapes. Uh, I've got a couple of examples here. And as we think about rotating uh, around the x-axis, we end up with some interesting three-dimensional shapes. And we can work out the volume of those shapes because effectively what we've got at any slice is a circle and the radius of the circle is simply the value of the y coordinate of the original shape so we can have a think about that in terms of how we the formula for it. let's look at one uh, particular shape so we've got a line uh, the line y equals x and that defines an area under it <coughs> got a right angle triangle and if we were to rotate that around the x-axis if you imagine it, uh, this particularly this point here, uh, the point B f of x, um, spinning around at that distance away, that effectively becomes the kind of radius of the outside uh, face. We end up with a cone which looks something uh, like that, and this point here at the top kind of travels. That's it in three dimensions, kind of travels around the outside. But any point on this line y equals x will travel a circular path. Okay, so we have a series of circles, which means that we're looking at um, just in the same way as we looked at the integral um, of the, the function for the area under the graph. We can think about it in terms of uh, the integral of some kind of circle function. Okay, so what we can say is uh, that the volume of revolution here is regarded as an infinite number of circular disks. So, as I said, at each point we can imagine a circular disk of a particular radius, and the radius at any point is simply the value of the function, the y-coordinate of, in this case, the line y equals x. And so we can create a volume formula that looks a bit like this. The volume is the integral of pi y squared. Now remember y is simply the distance from the x axis to the line or the curve. So that becomes the radius of the circle. So that's the equivalent of our pi r squared. And we still can use the bounds a and b, the lower and upper bounds. And if we integrate that with respect to x, then we can actually calculate the volume of a particular uh, Solid. Okay, let's have a, a look at an example of that. So here's example one, the section of the line y equals x. It's the same function between x is 0 and x is 4. It's rotated by the volume of the resultant solid. Okay, so we're thinking about, uh, just to try and draw a sketch, oops, wrong way around. Uh, go up. Oh, that's a double. Sorry, that's okay. So we've got our line y equals x, and we're saying basically that we want that to be 4, and we're saying it's with the origins, it's the y-axis, the x-axis. I'm going to rotate that all the way. We've got some kind of solid. So we've got a cone. Whoa. Rough sketch anyway. So we've got our cone. What's the, the, the volume of that shape? Well, we can use this formula. V equals the integral uh, of pi y squared dx. What are our uh, upper and lower limits here? 0 and 4. So we can write that in there. So that's the formula that we're going to use. We need to express the function in terms of y. Well, we know what the, the, the function is. y equals x. So in this case, the volume is the integral from 0 to 4 of pi times x squared dx. Now, this value pi is always a constant, so it's actually fine at any time to pull that pi out. It doesn't have to be part of the integral. Okay. We 
then do the integration as normal. We've got the integral of x squared is x cubed over 3. And we've got uh, for 4 is 0, which means that the volume is pi times. We've got a sort of difference of, uh, expression here. So we've got 4 cubed over 3 minus 0 cubed over 3. So that's going to be 0. And 4 cubed is 4 times 4 is 16, 10 times 4 is 64, 64 over 3. So we've got 64 pi over 3 cubic units. Okay, that's it. That's the volume of the cone that we would get if we rotate the, um, the line y equals x around the x-axis and consider the volume between 0, x equals 0, and x equals 4. Okay. That's it, okay? I'll give you another example, uh, example two, and then we'll have also have a look at what happens if we rotate it uh, around the y-axis.